Hello students, this is Dr. Dakshayani, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology, Maharani Science College, Pabaman, Bengaluru. Students, in this session, let us study and understand in detail about sericulture under economic zoology. The contents as follows, Introduction to Sericulture, Species of Silkworm, Rearing and Management Practices, Pets of Silkworm, and by-products of sericulture. Economic Zoology It is a specialized branch of zoology which deals with the animal world that is associated with the economy, health and welfare of humans. That means, economic zoology deals with the application of zoological knowledge for the benefit of mankind and it includes culturing animals for mass production for human use and to control or to eradicate animals that are injurious to man directly or indirectly. Here the syllabus deals with the topics in a scientific way and the multidisciplinary nature of economic zoology has given outstanding importance by incorporating topics like sericulture, apiculture, fisheries and etc. Students, in this session, let us know in detail about sericulture. Sericulture Sericulture or it is also known as silk farming. It is the breeding and management of silk worms for the production of silk. In simple terms, it is the cultivation of silkworms to produce silk. You can ask why silk, what is it and why so much of importance to it. The silk which is produced by silkworm is of valuable natural protein fiber. Yes, silk is the nature's gift to mankind and it is a commercial fiber of animal origin other than wool. It is being eco-friendly, biodegradable and self-sustaining material. Silk has assumed a special significance in present age. And sericulture is an agro-based industry and the term sericulture denotes commercial production of silk through silkworm rearing. When you see the history of silk, the historical evidence reveals that sericulture was practiced in China long back and they preserved the secret for more than 3000 years and maintained domination in silk trade with the rest of the world. According to western historians, mulberry cultivation spread to India about 140 BC from China through Tibet. The fabulous silk from China and India were carried through European countries. The 7000 mile lengthy road historically called as Silk Road passing through Baghdad, Tashkent and Istanbul was used for silk transport. Today more than 29 countries in the world are practicing sericulture and producing different kinds of silk where India stands third in silk production after China and Japan. Let us see the chemical and physical properties of silk. Silk is the protein secreted by the larvae of certain moths that belong to order Lepidopteran under class Insecta. It is fibrous in nature and widely used for the manufacture of art cloths. The silk is derived from silk moths mainly belonging to families Bombycidae and Saturnidae of order Lepidoptera. Where Silk filaments are formed of an inner core of material called fibroin 
which is covered by another substance called sericin where fibroin constitutes about 70 to 80% of the filament and it is an colloidal protein and when fibroin is heated or burnt it gives the smell of burnt feather and this property is used to distinguish the genine means virginal silk from artificial silk and sericin is also a protein of albuminous in nature when you see the physical properties of silk fiber that is its quality and quantity it depends on the size and strength of the cocoon where it is estimated that on an average a cocoon gives a silk filament of 600 to 1200 meters and to produce one pound means half a kg of raw silk about 2300 to 2600 cocoons are required in terms of weight about 11 kg of cocoon may yield 1 kg of raw commercial silk and 1 point kg of waste silks are spinned and the thickness of the silk filament may vary from 0 0.018 millimeter example bombyx mori silk filaments have great flexibility that is tensile strength and good elasticity that is a silk fiber can stretch one fifth of its original length and because of these two properties of silk it shows much of its excellence as a textile material hence silk is used mainly in the textile industry for manufacturing garments especially in the making of women's hoiseries due to the high investment requirement in the collection and production of silk use of silk textiles has become somewhat a status symbol coming to the types of silk moths that is silk worms the moths belonging to two major families that is bombycidae and saturnidae of lepidoptera group of insects produce commercial silk in india based on the quality and luster of the silk fibers four types of silks are produced by different forms of silk secreting moths the main species of silk secreting moths are bombyx species attacker species and anthracia species the silk worm types there are four major types of uh, silk of commercial importance which are obtained from different species of silk worms which in turn feed on a number of food plants except mulberry other varieties of silks are generally generally termed as non mulberry silks india has the unique distinction of producing all these commercial varieties of silk altinism altinism refers to the number of breeds raised per year where altinism is a genetically determined heritable character under hormonal control based on altinism silk worm species can be divided into three types of races first one is uni altins which means one generation and one yield per year by altins means they have two generations and three yields can be produced per year and they are of super quality of silk fiber and poly or multi voltine means they produce more than three generations and yield throughout the year but the silk fiber is of poor quality first one is the bombyx mori or commonly called as mulberry silk the bulk of commercial silk produced in the world comes from this variety and often 
silk generally refers to mulberry silk mulberry silk comes from the silk worm called bombyx mori of bombycidae family and it exclusively feeds on the leaves of mulberry plant these silk worms are completely domesticated and reared indoors means inside rooms in india the major mulberry silk producing states are karnataka andhra pradesh west bengal tamil nadu and jammu and kashmir which together accounts for about 92% of country's total mulberry raw silk production next is the tassar tassar is copperish in color and the coarse silk mainly used for furnishing and interiors it is less rustless than mulberry silk but it has got its own feel and appeal tassar silk is generated by the silk worm called anthraria milita of anthraria family which mainly grow well on the food plants such as terminalia and arjuna they are reared in nature on the trees in open in india tassar silk is mainly produced in the states of jharkhand chatisgarh and orissa besides maharashtra and west bengal and andhra pradesh tassar silk as tassar culture is the main stay for many tribal community in india the other form of uh, tassar silk is the oak tassar silk it is a fine variety of tassar which is generated by the silk worm called anthraea proeli in india it feeds on natural food plants of oak which is found in abundance in sub himalayan belt of india covering the states of manipur himachal pradesh uttar pradesh assam meghalaya and jammu and kashmir china is the major producer of oak tassar in the world and this comes from another silk worm which is known as anthraea peri the third type of a uh, silk is the eri which is also known as endi or erandi where eri is a multi ultine silk which is spun from open ended cocoons which is also known as ahimsa silk unlike other varieties of silk eri silk is the product of the domesticated silk worm called attacus ricini that feeds mainly on castor leaves in india this culture is practiced mainly in the northeastern states and assam and it is also found in bihar west bengal and orissa the fourth type is the muga silk this is golden yellow color silk and is privilege of india and the pride of assam state it is obtained from semi domesticated multi ultine silk worm called anthraea assaminensis the silk worms feeds on the aromatic leaves of somfu and soalu plants and are reared on trees similar to that of tassa muga culture is specific to the states of assam and it is an integral part of the tradition and culture of that state muga silk is a high value product and is used in products like sarees and chaddars have a look at these uh, four types of silk worms that is mulberry eri tassar and muga and this table depicts the species of silk worm and silk producing states in which they are reared and types of uh, silks as we know that production of production of silk from the silk worm by rearing practices on a commercial scale is called sericulture and it is an agro based industry comprising three main components the first one is cultivation of 
food plants for the silkworms second one is rearing of silkworms and third one is reeling and spinning of a silk the first two are agricultural and the last one is an industrial component coming to the cultivation of food plants for the silkworms except bombyx mori that is mulberry silkworm all are reared in open field means in nature and mulberry silkworm is rearing predominant in india hence cultivation of mulberry plantation is of more significant to study there are four indian species of uh, mulberry namely morus alba morus indica morus serrata and morus lavigata are cultivated as main food plants of bombyx mori silkworm and different st- systems of plantations for mulberry are practiced in india where in india the temperature ranges from 16 degree celsius to 31 degree celsius and mulberry silkworm can be reared throughout the year in karnataka also where the temperature ranges from 16 to 31 degree celsius which provides ideal climatic conditions for rearing mulberry silk throughout the year whereas in west bengal the multivoltaic silk worms rearing is practiced even under adverse temperature conditions and in jammu and kashmir univoltaic variety of silk worm is culture only once in a year during may to june let us understand the life cycle of bombyx mori the adult bombyx mori is about 2.5 cm in length and it is pale creamy white in color due to its heavy body and feeble wings flight is not possible by the female moth and this moth is unisexual in nature and does not feed during its very short life period of about 2 to 3 days just after emergence male moth copulates with female for about 2 to 3 hours and if not separated they may die after few hours of copulating with female just after copulation female starts laying eggs which is completed in about 1 to 24 hours a single female moth can lay for about 400 to 500 eggs depending upon the climatic conditions and two types of uh, eggs are generally found namely dipause type and non dipause type where the dipause type means x shows dormancy period during summer and get active in autumn and this type of x are laid by silk worms inhabiting the temperate regions whereas silk worms belonging to subtropical regions like india lay non dipause type of x this type of x are most temperature tolerance and the x after 10 days of incubation hatch into larvae called as caterpillar or silk worms and the newly hatched caterpillars is about 3 mm in length and it is pale yellowish white in color and the caterpillars are provided with well developed mandibles type of mouth parts which are adapted to feed easily on the mulberry leaves after second means first second third and fourth moltings where the caterpillars are the larvae get transformed into second third fourth and fifth instars respectively and it takes about 21 to 25 days after hatching the fully grown caterpillars is about 7.5 cm in length and it develops salivary glands and they stop feeding and undergoes pupation means formation of pupa 
the larvae are the caterpillars stop feeding and move towards the corner among the larvae and secretes a sticky fluid through their silk glands and the secreted fluid comes out through spinnerets which is a narrow pore situated on the mouth and takes the form of long fine thread of silk which hardens on exposure to air and is wrapped around the body of caterpillar in the form of a covering called cocoon and it is the white colored bed formed around the pupa which shows outer threads are of irregular form whereas the inner threads are of regular form for a surprise the length of continuous thread which is secreted by a caterpillar for the formation of cocoon is about 1000 to 1200 meters and that requires 3 days to complete finally the pupal period lasts for about 10 to 12 days and the pupae cut through the cocoon and emerge into adult moth after getting briefed about life cycle of a silk moth we shall understand the very important stage in sericulture is rearing and management practices of silk worms in sericulture that is mainly of methodology involved rearing of silk worm for which a typical rearing house which is measuring about 6 meter into 4 meter into 3.5 meter is constructed on an elevated place where shade to accommodate about 100 disease free layings that is moths and space of about 1 meter should be provided surrounding the rearing house and sufficient windows and ventilators should be provided for free circulation of air inside the rearing house the windows and ventilators should be covered with nylon net to restrict the entry of house flies and other insects apart from the specified area of the rearing house the machines such as hygrometer power sprayers rearing stands foam pads wax coated paraffin papers nylon nets baskets for keeping leaves gunny bags and bamboo montages and dryers are needed for effective rearing of silk worms the steps involved in rearing process of silk worms are disinfection of rearing house incubation of eggs brushing young larval rearing and late age larval larval rearing for the convenience the methodology of sericulture is discussed under five headings the first one is collection of eggs incubation of eggs rearing of larvae recovery of cocoons reeling of cocoons up to spinning of cocoon is called as pre cocoon processing and after that it is called as post cocoon processing which includes recovery of cocoons and reeling of a uh, cocoons let us see in detail about each step the first one is the collection of eggs in this step ripe cocoons are selected for mating and production of eggs where the cocoons meant for raising adult moths are collected 
and they are threaded together and hung from the roof to within a foot of the foot height from the ground where earlier examinations are made to assess the health of the cocoons where the unhealthy or ill formed cocoons are rejected and the moths emerged from the cocoons are selected and the selected healthy silk moths are allowed to mate for 4 hours and female moths is then kept in a dark plastic bed where it lays about 400 eggs in 24 hours and the female is taken out then crushed and examined for any disease where only certified disease free eggs are reared for industrial purpose the x collected means the x which are collected are washed repeatedly in distilled water to remove dirt and excreta the x are examined under the microscope at regular intervals for infections and it is estimated that the weight proportion of egg and silk fiber produced in the ratio 1.250 that is to produce 250 pounds of a silk one pound of egg must be hatched and reared the healthy and viable mass of eggs are collected and subjected for incubation the second step in rearing of silk worm is the incubation of eggs eggs of the silk worms called the silk seeds are incubated to obtain the larvae where the eggs are subjected to incubation after assuring the availability of mulberry leaves normally incubation is restored to when the mulberry buds are breaking into leaf the incubators are utilized to provide the optimum temperature and to regulate the hatching of the eggs further it helps in mass scale hatching of eggs simultaneously which is highly economical the eggs are spread evenly in a tray and placed inside the incubator and set the temperature of 65 fahrenheit and then the temperature is then slowly raised by 1 or 2 degree daily and at 77 degree fahrenheit the hex hatches out the next stage is the rearing of larvae at this stage at most clean that is cleanliness and hygiene should be maintained while handling the larvae as they are easily vulnerable to infections the incubator tray containing just hatched out larvae is taken and covered with perforated paper the tender and finely finely cut pieces of mulberry leaves are placed over the paper the egg larvae wriggle out through the pores on the paper and begin feeding on the leaves where rearing is done in a special room or the cabin and the temperature is always maintained at 77 degree fahrenheit then the larvae are transformed to large wire meshed covers with paper and along with their increase in increase in their size the number of larvae in each tray is reduced to prevent overcrowding at this stage the larvae feed voraciously and in 4 to 5 days their size doubles and this feeding phase or the larval phase lasts for about 40 days during which it passes through four periods of a sleep alternating with four molting stages and during which each molting the old skin of the larvae is shed out and new one is formed from the beneath the skin a 
after the end of the fourth mount the larvae enter the spinning stage that is spinning of cocoons this is the period when the larvae are what is called caterpillar or the silkworm stops feeding and starts a secreting a plasty substances from the silk gland in this condition the worms should be picked up and transformed to the spinning trays and kept in a position of a slope that is slanting to the sun for a short period and within 3 days a spinning is over and cocoon is formed and in this slide picture shows the completely formed cocoons in the trays and cocoons transformation is the last phase of the rearing of larvae means rearing of a silkworm and this stage lasts for about 9 to 11 days at this stage here again overcrowding must be prevented otherwise silk threads of two nearby larvae may get entangled and spoil the fiber when spinning is completed the cocoons are collected and the cocoons may be preserved immediately after the spinning is over or else the chrysalis that is a pupa which is molted inside may cut the exit hole on the cocoon which spoils the silk fiber but the cocoons are suffocated by using steam and they are collected over porous trays and placed over a big container containing boiling water the steam will percolate through the pores of the tray and uh, kills the chrysalis inside the cocoon the treated cocoons can be stocked for weeks in dry places where the chrysalis or the pupa uh, dies inside and gets dried up slowly from collection of x to beginning of spinning of cocoons by mature larvae is known as pre cocoon processing phase in sericulture